to episode 13 of Inside the Table, a tabletop RPG talk show, a show in which we talk about the craft of tabletop role-playing games. My name is Marley, you can follow me at Mina underscore Lenahan on Twitter, and Mina hyphen Lenahan on co-host, and my pronouns are he, him, and joining me today is my co-host. Hi, my name is Marley, you can follow me at Mina underscore Lenahan on Twitter, and Mina hyphen Lenahan on co-host, and my pronouns are he, him. Now you'll notice that that Cole is is absent. Uh, it is another one of those fun special episodes in which um, Cole is unfortunately under the weather. Uh, so I'm going to play a solo RPG. Quick shout out to to Cole. Hope you're feeling better. Hope everything's doing okay. Um, and also a special shout out. Uh, Cole and his partner Holly were engaged between the last recording and this one. Um, Cole actually mentioned behind the scenes that they were planning a special surprise, and I'm delighted to find out what it was. It was very, very, very sweet. So congrats, you two. Today, we are going to play a very special game. Um, it is uh, Notorious, uh, with, uh, which is a game with writing designed by Jason Price, artwork by Torben Borkemeyer, layout and design consultation by Jack Harrison, and editing by Will Jobst. Um, it's available at alwayscheckers.itch.io slash notorious. Now, this game has character sheets, stats to keep track of, dice to roll, and tables to roll on. Uh, so in addition to producing this podcast in audio format, uh, I have also made a companion video available on our YouTube. Uh, you can watch it at youtube.com slash at inside the table. YouTube has graciously updated how they name channels and so now it is very easy to find so if you're feeling confused listen to the audio feel free to jump over there there should be a link in the description now that having been said let me tell you something about the game now let me tell you what notorious is so notorious it's a game in which you can tell stories of nomads, notorious bounty hunters who strike fear among the scum and villainy of the universe and follow the dubious code of the nomads guild in the midst of an intergalactic war, you'll take on lucrative contract from one of six factions. The job is simple. Uh, bring the target back, dead or alive. No disintegrations. But your presence won't go unnoticed. Your growing reputation also attracts a series of hostiles, suspicious locals who simply don't like you and their friends might not either, rival nomads or faction agents working against you. Survive these encounters and face off against your elusive target, Finish the job and receive credits in infamy or fail to live up to the code and face the consequences. Uh, basically, this is The Mandalorian. This is Star Wars. This is all kinds of things like this. Uh, if you are like me and have been very interested in, in, in Star Wars and wanted to play a Star Wars game, then this is an incredibly good one. Uh, uh, in a few months, there's undoubtedly going to be some kind of Andor game and I will probably play that too. But I saw this game, it has tremendous art, um, I think I'll quickly highlight that if you're watching the video. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really beautiful book with, with really interesting tables and such like that. Um, and it's one of those things that it came across my Twitter and I was just like, this looks amazing. Who, what is this art? How, is, how does this look so damn good? Um, and yeah, and so I've just decided to, to have a go at it and sort of see how it goes. Now, I have pre-generated a character in preparation for this. The, the book, of course, supplies a number of very useful tables to generate stories. And that's one of the things that I really like in that it is so many games use tables to, to tell their stories and stuff like this. Uh, but it's generally things like very simple answers, very easy solutions. Like, oh, uh, how do they feel about you? Are they angry? Are they are they friendly? Are they indifferent? And this one is just like, here is a bunch of flavor. Here is a bunch of questions to answer. Here is a bunch of things to explore. Things like personality, profile, and or personality origin and trigger is really interesting. And it's sort of, I'm very intrigued to see how it helps tell this story. Um, it also has a number of events which we'll get into. But yeah, to introduce the character, I am playing Quip Emwis, she, her. She is a Valk, a bird-like person. Um, her profile is the Assassin, which I'll quickly jump over to the art, if you're watching the video. Um, and I am playing uh, this Assassin, uh, which 
has a bunch of fun little options has like the default illustration is of a of a cool lizard person with with uh glasses and stuff like that and i'll quickly just scroll through all the other the cool little characters here and there because they're all incredibly good there's a robot there's a brute there's a scoundrel there's an uncanny which is which is a weird little 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 guy and yes so i basically rolled on the table and i got an assassin and I've basically chose to do that. Um, yes, so I am basically playing uh, Quip. Uh, Quip was uh, employed by the Red Moon Syndicate, which is a group that's run by, I think, kind of like a Count Dooku kind of person. They, they're they very secretive, like the... Um, hold on, I'll bring you over. Uh, they're a secretive but influential crime organization uh, run by uh, Zix the 13th, a manipulative, manipulative and intelligent aristocrat. The syndicate favors using agents, assassins, and spies over open warfare where possible. So in my mind, this is a Count Dooku, aristocratic, someone has some kind of dark organization going on. Um, and basically... I was, my character Quip was formerly employed by the syndicate until I angered the capricious leader, which is, um, six, was it? Zix, thir 13th. Um, I am, my personality is arrogant. I believe uh, I am famous for being the sniper who doesn't miss. Um, my scar is you missed the crucial sniper shot when someone you loved was relying on you. So that was my trigger. And my scar is you lost three figures on one hand in an altercation with a warrior from the of the Mystic Order. Now, the Mystic Order is the equivalent of of Star Wars of the the Star Wars Jedi, and so I'm very kind of curious what happened there. Um, but the general gist is that I'm just this cool sniper bird lady who is very you know great at shooting and and doing all this thing and was renowned and famous and like built up this whole reputation. And then I missed a shot because of someone I loved, who I don't know who that is. I think that'll come up and play. Um, was relying on me and I missed. And so I'm basically in this, like, I probably got fired. I'm like doing nomad jobs and like doing random assortments of jobs here and there as I try and, you know, build back my reputation, see how I go. And the, the way this, this mission will go will depend on how well I do. Um, my weapon is a precision scoped laser rifle, uh, which is plus four attack for the first roll, then plus two damage for everything afterwards because i'm aiming and i do more damage and then less melee weapon is a combination concealed bl blade and martial arts training uh plus three damage and opponent has negative one heart um which will come up um and then i basically have a hooded cow mysterious insignia and padded armor and yeah and so that'll sort of come up and play now i've already rolled what my what my bounty is because i will be playing as a bounty hunter content warning here this is going to be me doing basic bounty hunter stuff. Despite being called a nomad, this is what I do. It, it's sort of like open what I will do. I'm sorry. I'm basically like interacting with a bunch of different sort of factions and this kind of thing. Um, and sort of seeing what it's like living in this in this strange universe. Uh, the planet I'm on is Storix, which is kind of like a volcano. Uh, what's the planet? There's like a planet in... in um, it's the planet that Darth Vader lives on. It's like a cool volca volcano planet. Um, the description of Storix in this thing is mountain passes, colossal machinery, dark tunnels, active vo volcanoes. Uh, the, the group that's in charge of it is the Red Moon Syndicate, which is the group that I myself used to work for before I was discharged. Challenging is the Targ Cartel, which is the equivalent of the Huts from Star Wars, who are just like big crime family of... of, of worm-like slug people uh the targs are slug-like people in this group as well um and the minor little group is the mystic order so the jedis are also meddling around here the primary races are lektok which are insectoid people murian which are rat-like people and gol which are horn-like people so we'll basically roll these people as we, we we go through and generate npcs um and yes my target is isuki itch which is spelled i I T S U K I I T S C H is he they. They are a human, which is an ape like species, and their personality is cocky. Uh, he wears a garish gold cloak and ivory mask, which makes him stand out. Um, actually, has a similar personality type to me, both arrogant and cocky. 
are are both tra- personality traits that we share. Um, the client faction is the Mystic Order. They have hired me because the target is a rogue warrior of rogue, rogue warrior of the Mystic Order who has switched alliance to the light or dark. And I got a choice to pick whether they went light or dark, I think. And so I have gone for light. And so I like the idea that the Mystic Order here is bad. They are bad Jedis who are doing evil, who are doing dark stuff. And Itsuki Itch is a person who betrayed them and walks around in a gold cloak and thinks that he is great and he is he is good. And so I'm excited to come across this character. Um, as I play, this character will, will change. I will essentially go through a number of leads and i will perhaps get a surprise about who itsuki itch actually is and so yeah um i also start off with two favor and two motivation and no notoriety which in a game like notorious is ominous um essentially as i play i'm going to exchange points and move it around as we go but anyway let's jump into it um i basically will start i believe by um rolling on a encounter table i believe it will start off with exploration so as it says you have hidden your ship and must travel on foot across the wilds of the planet unless you acquire a vehicle or pack beast uh roll on the table exploration table below to find out what happens to you as you travel it may ask you for one or more exploration events or you may might introduce a new lead essentially in order to progress along the story and get things to happen um, I have to meet leads who will help me move along my task. But because I have uh, zero no- notoriety, then I will basically not encounter that. So I'm going to start by rolling a d6. I got a six, which is nothing eventful happens. <laughs> Gain mo- one motivation and roll a die. So I will gain one motivation. And... Uh, so, I have a, a roll or die to see what happens when nothing happens. I got a one. What peaceful local activity do you spend time observing? Um, so, I have arrived on this planet. I have left my ship, which I, I will not describe. I have my sniper rifle. I have my cool weapons. Yeah, and and basically I'm wandering around Storix. There is mountain passes, colossal machinery, dark tunnels, active vol- volcanoes. I think what this is, is this is a really cool shot of me basically moving along this blackened landscape with like lava exploding. It's like a cool silhouette shot or like a cool like landscape shot as I walk through this thing. And I sort of look up and I see that there is, I see that there is like a bunch of just people. There is like insectoid rat like and horned people working on this industrial machinery, like doing their work and this kind of thing. It's probably like this quiet moment where I don't have to prove myself. I don't have to fight anybody. I don't have to do anything. I'm just wondering with this this gun over my shoulder, going for a walk, and sort of looking around. Now I basically arrive at a destination. Uh, destinations, as the text says, can include simple markets, hidden dens, crashed starships, military walkers, bustling spaceports, and capital cities. Uh, roll for your destination table opposite where you arrive. You get a brief description of the destination, which we'll use on the planet profile to create a name location. You may have previously visited the destination, in which case the information will be already known. So I'll roll a d6, and I'll see what I get. I got a 6 again, which is, you arrive at a fortified base or palace run by the controlling faction. Shit. Uh, resolve both. Um, so, there is Dusk the Red Moon Fortress. Uh, the ruling faction in this case is my former employer, which is the Red Moon Syndicate. Uh, so I arrive, I gain one notoriety, uh, if it's four or higher, hostile guard approaches. So I think I basically walk into here and essentially they, they, they see me. They basically might like see me. I'm imagining like people outside who are just like sort of scoffing at me as I'm approaching and wandering through. And like seeing me like, you know, a dog returning with a tail between their legs, coming back to this this thing. And I keep my head down, again, holding the the the, the gun over my shoulder and continue moving on. Uh, next, I roll twice on the destination events table. So this is bad because I want to have as few events as possible because I don't want bad stuff to happen. 
Um, but yeah, let's let's roll over there. So the way events uh, work is that I basically roll a d6 to determine which of the tables I'm rolling on. I got a four, so I'm on the destinations events three to four. Then I roll another d6 to see what happens. So I rolled a six. You enter a bar and immediately bump into another nomad. This isn't the first time you've encountered them. Roll a die. Yep. I got a five. They catch your eye, nod, and go on their way. Gain one favor. Where did you and several of the nomads gather? Where did you and several of the nomads gather to accept your current contract? Oh, so this is interesting. Um, so I'm imagining this is me sort of like wandering into this um, grand palace. Uh, which I think is like, I think it might have been like in, in former times, it was more of an aristocratic place, but currently it is maybe taken over by this gang. Like the gang's moving around. So they've set up a tavern and stuff like that and they're chilling out. So I arrive here and maybe as I like enter into this place, I see someone else who is also, I've also previously met with like, um, essentially I, we both work for the the mystic order and so presumably i come across this other person who is um i'll quickly roll let's move over to here i look at a random character i got zeke abbas who is a talok a reptilian species who is sort of meek so i think that this is the 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 lizard with glasses that's in the book under the the assassin um, they are basically quietly like having a drink. I think they have the vibes of being kind of religious and kind of like more connected to the mystic order than I would be. And so I basically see them and nod and I'm like, oh shit, they they were both here for the same job. So there's some kind of competition here. Um, I nonetheless go over there and have a drink. I use my, uh, my left hand because the other one is missing fingers. I think from an encounter I had with the mystic order. I think the bartender laughs at me as I'm there because, again, returning with my tail between my legs. And yeah. And so let us roll for the second encounter, which is... Let's roll a d6 for the table. I got a two. And then I roll a six. Okay, you see an unaffiliated mercenary or rebellious citizen being intimidated by a hostile soldier or guard, which is two danger, two attack, two star and one heart, roll a die. Um, so this is going to be, this could be a combat. Um, let's see how this goes. So one to three, something about your scene sets off your trigger and you walk away, what building or statue were they defacing and what are the graffiti depict? And four to six is if you successfully get out of this, get rid of the hostile, you may try to recruit the asset. How do they try to keep you down or scare off their tormentor? If that happens, we'll come across a mechanic. I rolled a six. So um, I, if you successfully get rid of the hostile, you may try to recruit the asset. Um, so I'll bring you over to this table, to this table, to this table, to this table, this table, uh, which, which gives a list of potential reactions. Now this game has four different reactions, which is speak, threaten, attack, or recruit. And depending on who I'm up against, like uh, will will sort of outline what I can do. So it's not like a thing where I come across a person, like a local, and I can easily attack and threaten them. Um, it is more sort of like, depending on their relationship and their, their, their role, will depend on what I can do to them. So in the case of a hostile, I cannot speak to them, but I can threaten or attack them, depending on what I will, will do. Um, they seem tough. So I think what I will do is I will, I will, I will threaten them. Um, so the way this, this works is I, um, I will use my reputation. So a nomad's reputation often precedes them. A subtle movement, confident attitude, or menacing stare may be all they need. You may try to threaten any hostiles you meet to warn them off without resorting to violence or causing a scene. So basically what I will do is I will roll a challenge die for them and a challenge die for my, or a regular die for myself. So what I have to do is beat their number. Um, I believe, uh, let me just double check this. So I have to roll above, uh, higher than the challenge die 
and I can succeed, otherwise it fails. Now luckily, uh, the modifier here is I add half my not notoriety rounded up. Now I have one notoriety, it's half is one half, so I get one not notoriety to go up against these things. So the fact that I arrived this in this place and was noticed gave me a bonus. So I'll roll 1d6 plus 1, we got a 3, so a 2 plus 1, and they got a 6. So, <laughs> uh, failure, you're not as scary as you thought you were. The hostiles start a fight with you, resolve the action reaction and add 1 to the challenge die on the first roll. So, uh, I think what this is, is, um, let's just jump over to this. So I see uh, essentially an unaffiliated mercenary or rebellious citizen being intimidated by a hostile soldier or guard. I think what this is, is this might just be kind of like a sort of a drunk person from, from around the bar, like starting a fight or doing something like this. And then the I think I'm, I'm imagining like a um, red, what are they called? The Red Moon Syndicate person is basically like baiting them into like a proper fight. So they're just like, yeah, go draw your pistol, do do all this. And I sort of see this and I sort of like wander out. And like, again, I don't, um, I have my, my precision scope laser rifle over one shoulder. I've got like missing ha fingers on one hand. Um, and I walk over to them and say like, hey, cut it out or whatever. Uh, pick on someone your own size. And I'm like eyeing everybody else and making sure they recognize me and like seeing me that like, you know who I am. I'm... Kip Emwis, the, the sniper who doesn't miss, you know me, you know all this sort of thing. Um, and I'm like, pick on someone who's who's worth a damn. And I think everybody pauses, everybody looks at me and they're just like, they just laugh. And they're just like, they just see me doing this and they're just like, this is ridiculous, I'm not wasting my time with this. You are, you're Kip Emwis who who missed the the crucial, crucial sniper shot. Um, and who is deeply embarrassing. So, that being said, it's time to have a fight. Uh, so, let's roll over to attack. So I get to explain how attacks work. Um, nomads can bring their targets in warm or they can bring them in cold, but they've got to earn the right to choose. The attack reaction is your chance to inc incapacitate or kill a hostile lead or target. So this person who's trying to threaten this, this uh, one drunkard uh is is getting ready to, to pull a gun on me um so i will basically <sighs> i feel like if i draw my sniper rifle it wouldn't work because it's like i'm sort of like i'm imagining i know my sniper rifle is really good but i'm just like i'm i'm thinking that it doesn't make sense because i'm imagining this is kind of like a street fight so instead i'm going to use my concealed blade and my martial arts training to to attack them uh which gives me a th plus three attack uh which will give me a plus three modifier and it will remove one of their hearts they hearts they currently have plus one heart so zero so if i succeed on this okay so i'm going to take a moment just to explain how the mechanics work um you have attacks which are marked by um, sort of stars or this kind of thing, which gives you a modifier to your dice roll. So it gives you plus two, plus three, whatever. Um, you also have hearts, which which gives you, essentially it gives you a number of attacks you can survive. So if I have three hearts, I can survive three rounds of combat before it gets actually kind of risky. In this case, I'm coming up against a hostile soldier or guard, which is this, this uh, uh, r red moon red moon syndicate member and he has one heart but my martial arts skill and this kind of thing uh gives me the opportunity to essentially bypass that and like get this over nice and quick um so the way this will work is i will roll a d6 plus three and my opponent will roll a d6 plus plus three so we're basically on equal footing because 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 basically i've been laughed at so i will roll my dice i got a four plus three that's a seven and they rolled a a two plus three so they rolled a five so i win this um and i take them down immediately 
so essentially what happens is I beat them up. Uh, they are basically, they have their gun and I imagine that they're ready to pull for it. And I just basically like jump and then just like stab them and like, you know, you know, stab them and knock them down. And they're like thrown on the ground and they're like grabbing their wound. And I like sort of kick them and make them go away. I get a, uh, a choice. The way this mechanic works is um, on a success, I get to choose my opponent's fade. I can spare them and gain one favor. Uh, or I can kill them and gain one no notoriety. So favor is my my way of convincing people and getting people on board and such. And killing is my way of becoming known. Now, I think because of who I am and because of where I am and what is going on, I'm going to avoid my usual impulse of, of being nice in RPGs. And because I'm trying to prove myself in, in this, this, in Dusk the Red Moon Fortress... Uh, I am going to kill this person. So I'm going to kill them uh, and gain one notoriety. So I'm now at two no notoriety, three favor, and three motivation. Also, the way motivation works, just to sort of bring that in, is I can use that to re-roll if something goes bad. So I could have done that, but I liked how the story went, so I'll leave it as that. So basically what happens is after I have come across them and they tried to to pull a gun on someone, I jump forward, stab them with the blade, and then leave them on the floor. Uh, and then I look at the drunkard who's next to them. I believe I can just, I can just recruit them. How do I do this? What happens now? Um, can I introduce? Okay, so I don't think I get a... So the way I get leads is by basically rolling on the appropriate table. Um, so I'm unable to do that at this current time. So I think what happens is the drunkard basically like sort of sees me and like looks frightened and wanders off. And I look at the other the other people and I just sort of scowl and show how tough I am and then hide away my concealed blade, which I'm imagining is like an Assassin's Creed, you know, wrist blade or something like that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is do an exploration event. I will roll on the, the, the table, um, and see what happens. Okay. I got a three. If your notoriety is five or higher, you encounter a lead. Otherwise roll once on the exploration events table. So I'm going to roll that. I got a six and I will roll another dice. And I got a five. Um, so I think what happens, you find a locked crate. So I basically think that after this, I like can't really find anything. Or maybe I'm like quietly asked to leave the uh, the Dusk Red Moon Fortress and continue sort of moving on. Uh, and I think all my attempts is to like ask about this this person I'm looking for, or maybe trying to follow um, Ezek Abbas and see what they, they're up to is is for naught. So it continues sort of like wandering around. This might be like a week later or something. Um, so you find a locked crate painted with a logo of a controlling faction. It's probably fallen off the back of a speedster. A uh, speeder. Roll a die. I got a three. So my options here are one to two, trying to open it triggers an explosive trap, lose one motivation, what pre-recorded voice message is played when you fail to break the lock, or three to six, which is what I got, you find a useful stash of ammo and fuel canisters, gain one motivation. Who is this crate intended to resupply and why did the pickup fail? Um, uh, so I'll write motivation. So I'm at four motivation now. Controlling faction is the Red Moon Syndicate. Uh, so I think what happens is, um, I like the idea that the Targ cartel might've basically appeared. Um, I think that like this truck might've been like, like a speeder might've been like crashed a, a while later. And it might be sort of like the, 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 the Targ cartel might've like drawn, um, something, uh, on it, like, like painted on like their symbol. And I think... Why, who is this tended, crate intended to resupply? I think let's pick a random location from here. I think that it was going towards Gur the Targ Spice Mines, which is destination two. Um, 
essentially, so the, the Red Moon Syndicate might have been trying to make an attack against the Targ Spice Mines, um, and it didn't happen. It didn't go well. Um, so uh, essentially, the, uh, the Targs found out, they took out the, the shipment, and that we are where we are. So let's roll on this table. So we get to do a destination now. Which hopefully is is go to the Targ Spice Mines, because it sounds fun. Uh right. So let's roll let's roll a D6. I got a two. Which is you you arrive in a small outpost and enclave run by the challenging faction. Choose one. Search for anyone who might be know your target to gain one favor. Or speak with the local works that to gain and then rest to gain one motivation. Uh, so I think what this is, is this is, this is go the Targ Spice Mines. Uh, so I basically arrive having departed Dusk the Red Moon, Red Moon Fortress, and I basically find people who work for the Targ Cartel. Uh, so I get to search for anyone who might know your target to gain one favor, or speak with the local who works here, to, uh, then rest to gain one motivation. Um, which is fun. I get to get to, to figure that out. I might search for someone who might know my target to gain one favor. So let's jump over to destinations. Okay. So the search thing says uh, some destinations will give you the option to search for someone connected to the target. If so, roll on the search table below and follow the prompt. So I'll roll, I got a three, which is nobody's seen your target and you've wasted precious time. Lose one motivation. Why can't you find anyone here who's willing to talk? Um, I think, <laughs> shit. So I will quickly subtract one motivation from this. Um, I think what it is, is I basically arrive into town with a bunch of ammunition that I stole from the, the, the broken shipment and like a reputation for being a member of the uh, Red Moon Syndicate. And everyone here knows my name. Everyone here knows that I am the person who never misses. Um, the sniper who doesn't miss. And so everyone's just like, oh, that's Quip El Mwiss. Everyone knows that. And so as I try and like ask, looking for this person, like showing this picture of this masked person in a gold suit, I find nothing. <laughs> so that's, that's unfortunate. However, I do gain one favor, which is great. So I will mark that on my sheet. So I'm currently at four favor. Uh, so again, I waste my time. I can't even have fun events here. I'm basically, again, like stonewalled and having to like move on my own. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to keep moving, I guess. Let's roll another two dice. So I got a four. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, I got a four. Uh, exploration table, if you're not already, is four or higher, you encounter a lead. Otherwise, roll twice in the exploration defense table. I got a three. This is the first one. And then I got a one, which is you see smoke rising on the horizon and discovering a burning building. The tracks outside suggest re residents left in a hurry. Roll a die. One to two. This is the work of your client. Lose one motivation. Why do the flames remind you of your trigger as it all turns to ash? Or three to six. This was done by a different faction. Gain one motivation. What smoldering clue left among the ashes gives away the perpetrators? Which is fun. So this is what I'm saying when I'm saying like random things you roll on your sheet, like really come into play and really get really interesting. So I'm going to roll a dice and see what happens. I got a four, which was, this was done by a different faction. Gained one motivation. What smoldering clue among the ashes gives away the perpetrators. So I basically arrive here having been stonewalled out of a, um, cool mining what was it the the targ spice mines 
and I come here and I find a place on fire. Um, I like to think this is the Mystic Order who hired me. And maybe there is like signs of lightsabers or something like that, where it's basically like someone like got a lightsaber, put it into a bunch of curtains until it set on fire and then burnt it. And uh, essentially people left and I don't know what this building is. Um, I like to think this is like a, maybe it's like a store. Maybe this was like some kind of burglary from the, from the mystic order that they were like, came here to like either buy stuff here and then they stole stuff or they like came here explicitly to do bandit stuff um and so they basically robbed this place and stole it away um however i'm not sure whether this is the work of the evil people or whether it's the the the, the work of my client i guess um and then i'll move on to a new destination having seen that okay I arrive in a small outpost or enclave, enclave run by a major minor faction. Choose one. Search for anyone who might know your target to gain one favor, or speak with a local local who works here, then rest to gain one motivation. Uh, so, so I got this one. So I basically leave this place and then I arrive at the 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 um what's it called the Mystic Order faction. So there is one of the locations is uh the jantus uh temple so i basically arrive here i'm picturing it like kind of like a like a, a wild west mission or something like this where it's just that this big white building and then there's like farms and like maybe like a vineyard or something around there and there's just these these priests who sort of like wandering around and i guess that some of them have lightsabers and stuff like that um and yeah, I sort of wander in and I am again going to search for anyone who might know my target to gain one favor. Uh, so, so I assume that these people are essentially unrelated to the faction who employed me. Maybe I was employed by someone off planet. Um, but I arrive here, you know, smelling in the, the, the volcan volcanic air and so forth and trying to breathe, I guess, because it's bad. Um, and, and so I'm going to basically ask around here to see if anyone knows or is associated with, uh, my, 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 the person I'm looking for, which is, which is a name that I forgot, uh, which is Isuki Itch, the, the garish gold cloak and ivory mask. So I'm once again going to roll on this for searching. So I'll roll 1d6. I got a three. Nobody's seen your target and you wasted precious time. Uh, I'm going to spend a motivation because I want story to happen, uh, which I would normally for this thing, to re-roll this dice. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do that. I'm just going to do that uh, because the nature of this game is that sometimes I might get stuck in a loop. So I got a one. Nobody's seen your target, but you encounter a hostile, one, one damage and one heart. How do you end up confronting or annoying someone here? Um, so I think what this is, is I wonder in and I'm asking about this dissenter from this, the, the dark mystic order and this, this person in this church who is, you know, different to everybody, everybody else. And I'm like, Hey, do you know a heretic? Do you know this kind of person? Are you a heretic? Are you doing this? Um, and I think eventually someone's going to be like, you're asking too many questions. I'm going to deal with this. So I'm like once more going to face a hostile, uh, which I'm going to try and do what I did before, which is I'm going to try and threaten them. And then I'm going to see what happens next. Uh, so I'll add half my notoriety rounded up, which is uh, going to be two divided by two, which is one. So plus one. And they will roll just a one dice with no modifiers. So I get a five, four plus one, and they get a one. So I succeed. On success, the hostile backs down, no longer an immediate threat. Roll on the threat neutralized table. After a few terse words, they leave or move aside, allowing you to continue on your way. Can I? Can I? Give me, give me notoriety. No. So I'll roll on this table. I'll find out what they think of me. I got a five. 
Uh, five, they grumble about someone they knew who became a nomad. Uh, why did this person join the guild and what became of them? You know who you remind me of? Um, so I think what this is, is uh, after asking around at a bunch of places and, and, you know, saying, hey, who are you a heretic? Are you this kind of thing? Uh, this person sort of like has, puts a hand on their blade and saying, you're asking too many questions. Um, and I look at them and I think I, like, I don't show my weapons. I have my sniper rifle over my shoulder. I have my concealed blade concealed. And I just look them in the eye. Um, and I don't think they've heard of me directly, but I think they sort of like feel the vibes that I'm giving off. And they say, you know who you remind me of? There was someone here, a priest. And they, they thought they were better than caring for people. They thought they were better than taking care of people, making sure they were fed, making sure they were taken care of, making sure they weren't threatened. They wanted money, they wanted power. And they left and we never saw them again. They went off to the stars to become rich and famous. And I think they name they name Zika Bass. Um, I think they name Zika Bass, who sort of went off to become this famous bounty hunter who's who's well known or whatever. Um, and as far as they know, they're dead. And I know that Zika Bass was the lizard that I saw in the tavern, who's also also doing this mission, uh, and is probably shy for a reason, but they do not. And I don't think I tell them. So they're a former mystic. Um, and I sort of nod. I sort of say, thank you. And then I ask like once more, like, do you, do you really not know where this, where my target is? Do you really not know this? And they shake their head and tell me to leave. Yes, so I, I basically continue moving on. Let's move to a brand new location uh, and try and try and figure this out. My concern is that like so many random event tables, this one's going to just sort of continue getting longer and longer and I'm just going to roll badly and be forced to play this for hours and hours. If that's the case, we'll figure it out. We'll work it out, but yes. Uh, so I'm going to go over to the expl exploration table and I'm going to roll on that to see what happens. I got a five. If your notoriety is three or higher, you encounter a lead. Uh, otherwise, roll once the exploration events table. So I will do that. Got a two and I got a one. So uh, I basically leave this place. I go for a walk through this volcanic landscape. And yes, you're offered a shelter for the night in the home of a harmless looking local. Try to speak with them by the campfire. And then roll a die. Um, so I will do that. <gasps> Wait, can I roll a die to try and get notoriety? I don't know if that's how that works. I'm just talking with them. I'm going to roll here. So. Currently four. So I'll roll plus two here and they will roll something. I got a one plus two. That's three. And they get a three plus zero. So they win because they uh, do success, do successfully. Uh, failure, the conversation goes poorly. You don't reveal anything. They are, and aren't interested in, take, in taking anything further this time. I'm going to re-roll. I'm going to spend a point of motivation. I now have one motivation remaining uh, in order to try that again. And hopefully I can get better than a one. I got a five. So that having been done, Let's roll on speaking with locals and assets. And I will roll this. I got a three. They have no choice but to stay loyal to a faction. What's preventing them from speaking their true feelings about the war? I gotta be careful what I say. You never know who's listening. So we haven't really defined this character. So I'm gonna quickly take us over to uh, create a random character. And we have got Nas Garask, which is another Taloc, a reptilian species, and they are rude. Uh, which is, choose one to answer, what stuffy formality do they insist on enforcing, or what unusual item of clothing marks them out? Um, I might change the Taloc thing. I might just roll on the table, simply because 
we have a bunch of people here. So I'm going to roll a dice here just to determine what race they are. I got a goal, so horned. So this is a goal. Uh, what stuff are your formality do they insist on enforcing? Uh, so I am currently sitting at the table with them. Hold on. So I am basically like wandering around looking for this person, finding no success, no one's speaking to me. Uh, and I'm off at Children of the Night in the home of a harmless looking local. Uh, this is, this is Nask Rask. Um, and I think what they are doing is they are basically insisting on all the politeness and all the, the, the little gestures of, of, of hospitality. I think there's this things where like, we must like share a certain amount of bread. We must go through all the rituals of, of the homeowner, all this thing. And I'm just kind of hungry. And I'm just like, I think like one of the things that comes up is uh, me having to re-roll and spending motivation. So uh, I think what I do is I basically, you know, get my own food and start eating, which kind of annoys them. But eventually they sort of warm up to me. Um, what group do they belong to? Let's roll a D. Let's roll a D6 to figure out what faction they belong to. One to two is Red Moon Syndicate. Three to four is a Tal Cartel, or four, five to six is the Mystic Order. I got a two. So this is a Red Moon Syndicate person. So this is someone who knows me, um, who's maybe like doing some kind of an outpost or something like this, like a guard for the Red Moon Syndicate. Um, I arrive, they recognize me, they maybe like laugh at me, like insist we we eat politely and all the rest of it. Um, and then Nask Rask talks to me about, about the faction he belongs to and how he feels about it. Um, he has no choice but to stay loyal to a faction. What's preventing them from tr speaking their true feelings about the war? You've got to be careful about what I say. You never know who's listening. Um, I think they're talking about the the disruption between um, between the Targ Cartel and the um, and the Red Moon Syndicate, and how how that war is going on. How like the the fight for territory and the fight for all this kind of shit is happening. They are basically struggling along doing that. Um, I think they they believe that the the Targ Cartel has a lot of really good ideas. I think they need like new changes. I think also Nask Rask might suck in that he's just like I wish it was more like the aristocratic past and not so like taken up by all this rabble and whatnot. Like maybe Nask Rask is a um, is like a uh it's like one of the old aristocrats or something like this and sort of likes the idea of like the cartel being so strongly about you know a family of 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 worm people that they might bring back the old values and stuff like that um but is also like knows that he's part of this war and knows that there's a lot of sort of struggle going on here and so he has to like sort of serve them and if he comes across a member of the, the Tar Cartel, he would he would have to kill them. He would have to shoot them immediately and not like share them, break bread with them like he did with me. And so maybe he just like winks and looks at me and says like, oh, hold on, we don't actually know. Because cause one of the things here is I have to roll. So I have to roll, I have to roll to determine uh, when, I, when I speak to them by the campfire, I'll see how they, they feel about me. Because... I was a member of the Red Moon Syndicate, but I'm not currently. I got a three, which is good. Uh, they warm to you as you sit together. You have a quiet night and may try to recruit them. What secret about your past, past do you share with them? So I think that he, in spite of his feelings about me being rude, kind of enjoys my company and sort of sees me, like, despite being exiled as a true member of the, the Red Moon Syndicate. So, um, the secret I share with them is, uh, let me look. So I missed this, the crucial sniper shot when someone you love was trying on me. I lost three fingers in one hand in order to keep the warrior from the mystics, uh, order. Um, so I think I talk about how I, I, I remove my arrogant facade in some way. Like I'm, I sort of admit to missing. I'm not the sniper who doesn't miss. I am the person who, you know, had a shot to take and I missed and someone I loved was relying on me, which I'll get into later. I have no ideas for that yet. Um, and I, I'd previously like lost my fingers on my own 
on one hand and i, I remember being so pr- like kind of proud of that or sort of like cocky about that because like you know i was missing those fingers and i could still shoot better than anyone else like this is my point of pride like everybody else was just like with their hands saying i couldn't shoot as well as them and i'm like yes i can i can shoot better um and then once i missed that shot that was the thing that that hurt me more than losing those fingers in some way um and so after that i became much more reckless um and i became much more more um arrogant and much like harder to work with and like the reason i was chucked out of the red moon syndicate was because of that and the reason i'm currently a nomad looking for a soldier that i can't fight like i, I can't find looking for a, a mystic that I'm, i can't find um so yeah and so i think in spite of this the 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 uh nask rask is just like yeah that's kind of how things go sometimes you know i'm not people are messy people sort of go through all that and people sort of make it out the other side um and then we eat and then i'm gonna try and recruit them let's try and roll that and i think if this doesn't go well i only have one motivation left so i'm not gonna spend that to re-roll anything but if i recruit them then i can show you a fun new mechanic um so i had half my favor rounded up i am at four so that is two i rolled a two plus two let's double check it says sometimes a prompt will explain that you automatically succeed no no need to roll i don't think that's the case no i have to try damn it and they get a three so i beat them i got a four uh so on success roll on the assets table choosing one of the two options determine who they are and what bonus they provide. Then roll in the species and personality tables to determine the rest of your assets key information. Um, I've already done that because I didn't know that's how it worked. Um, and I'll see what I got. I got a six. Unaffiliated mercenary or rebellious civilian. They attack the next hostile lead or target you encounter before you can react. Which is very funny because I think I'm leaving them here. Um, <laughs> they'll like turn up like a like a like a random <laughs> they'll just be here like an rpg character uh so they're going to be i'm going to call them a rebellious citizen so i'll write that down so nas grask rebellious citizen So I can basically call on Nas Grask at any time to to in the next fight they're going to appear. They will give me plus one stars so to attack. If they win, lose one notoriety and the debt is repaid. If they lose and die or get captured, gain one motivation. So my goal is to lose next fight if possible. Um, so yeah, so that's that's one exploration event um and then i will roll on destinations as i sort of keep moving on maybe maybe nas grask like goes with me i think maybe we wake up the next morning he's packed up his campfire packed up his place and says i'm gonna go with you um keep an eye out for you and like try and help out and try and smooth things over and i think he's like coming there as a diplomat but he's also going to kill people the next person i come across so that's fun um so destination three you arrive at a bustling market or traveling scrap crawler run by locals choose one roll once on the destination events table or speak with locals uh then rest or barter for supplies to gain one motivation ah so now i'm getting to the point where i might need motivation because i'm at i'm at one motivation currently um and i might need to get more than one to proceed However, I also need to get more notoriety, and that's kind of my big thing. I want to try and do the job. Um, And if I do the job right, then I get one notoriety and I can start coming across the person who's after me. So let's go for that. Roll once in the destination events uh, table, and I'll also define what the market is. I think this is the Hive Caverns uh so zuko the hive hive caverns so i think there's like lots of insect people here whereas this would maybe be sinister in other situations instead this is basically like 
it's fine. It's just the way that people like go and do shopping and so forth. Uh, so let's roll on the destination events table. Okay, I got a five and I got another five. Uh, a monster is on the loose and the locals are struggling to contain it. It's unusual to see these creatures in populated areas. Uh-oh. Choose one. Attack and subdue the monster to gain one notoriety. Uh, how do you get the mo monster to focus on you? Uh, or simply unwatch the folder, uh, the chaos unfold to gain one favor. Where has the monster come from and what has enraged it? I gotta fight. I gotta get this one notoriety. So... I'm going to attack it. Can I? Can I talk with it? I think it's just a monster, so I just have to, just have to attack. Okay. Let us, uh, so I'm gonna attack, but I have to lose. No! Oh, I hate this stupid guy. Having this dude with me sucks because, like, if I succeed on this, I gain one notoriety and then I lose one notoriety because of this loser. Oh, fuck. So the best case scenario is a lose. And then I can get out of here. Wait, wait, wait. They attack. Aha, they have one attack. If they win, lose one notoriety and their debt is repaid. If they lose or die or get captured, gain one motivation. So if this guy dies, then I get this. It's such an interesting thing because like as a as a GM, I'm trying to kill this person. But as a player, I don't think this person wants to die. I don't want this person to die. Okay. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. So. They are going to attack this monster. And hopefully they will die so I can get my notoriety. Uh, so the, the monster gets plus four and this guy has plus one. So I'm going to roll for him first. Got a three plus one. So that's a four. So whatever happens, he's going to die. So great. Got a six plus one. So that's 10. So the, the monster's on the loose. I'm there with, with my rifle and I, oh, like my, my blade because that works better. I think. I'm getting ready to go, and then uh, I think this guy like sort of stands forward, takes out his pistol uh, or like rifle or something, and then shoots at it. Uh, it like 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 skims off of it, it, like hits its head, and then like gets deflected somehow because of laser proof skin. And then the monster just like looks at him and just goes boomf and kills him. Uh, I get one motivation, huzzah. Uh, and I go on to the next fight. So he has lost, he has died. I basically get an extra life and I get an extra chance to attack, but he's just like, what are you doing? He's just like absolutely wiped out. So I will quickly uncheck Nasgrask from this thing. Nasgrask is dead and I feel emboldened to kill this thing. As a GM, I am just like, I want to just kill this thing and, and move on. I want to get my notoriety. But as, 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 as Quip M Mwis, I'm deeply saddened by seeing my friend and confidant Nasgrask be killed. So let us proceed. I keep pressing the wrong button. Uh, let's go to attack. So I'm going to use... Uh, concealed blade martial arts training. I think I'm like, once again going to use my concealed blade, uh, which is pretty good. It, it does have a plus four though, but if I succeed on this, then that's it. That's over. Um, and I also have a motivation from this thing, so I can spend that to to get the bonus. So I'm gonna roll for myself. I got a three plus three is six, and then it will roll. It gets a six, which is bad because that's a 10. Uh, so I'm going to spend one of my motivation uh, to re-roll their dice. They get a four plus, plus four is eight. Still better than my six. I'm gonna spend one more motivation. What happens if I die? If I die, I lose Hold on. 
if I die here, I will get to have another attack. I basically have my armor be be defeated. I have plus one armor against this thing. So I have one chance to, to, to succeed. I think having motivation is more, more useful than not having motivation. So what I will do is I will take the L. Uh, my armor will be damaged. And then we'll roll again. We'll both roll again to try and get past this. I need this notoriety. Uh, so what I will do... See, this is great. See, getting to this point of the combat and just being like, I could take the take the L and re-roll both my dice, and if that goes wrong, then I can roll the motivation. But I also have my concealed blade, which immediately gives me the the bonus. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna keep my motivation. I'm gonna fail, uh, which basically means that I will take the L. I'll basically get hit uh, and like knocked against a wall. I think my my padded armor is just like scratched by it. And like he sort of throws me away as I try and like sneak up close. Um, and it roars and like charges through a building and comes to me again. What's his health again? I think I have to kill it with a concealed blade, otherwise it'll just go on forever. Uh it's got plus one heart, so I have to attack again with the concealed blade, which means plus three. And yeah. So this could be the end of me. I got a two, which isn't great. Plus three is Five. So if it rolls a one, I'm golden. It rolled a six. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, I've got one motivation, so I can do one more re-roll. So I can re-roll the two, and if I get a six, I might get an eight. No, if I get a six, I might get a nine, which would still fail. So I have to re-roll their dice in order to do this. So with a, they have to roll a one. If they roll a one, what happens? They get a five. So we're currently equal. So the best I can hope for is a draw. Fuck. What happens if I lose? Let's find out. Uh, oh my God. So the, so if I fail. If you fail an attack after exhausting defense and motivation, it's time to roll for your fate. Roll a die. A one to two, choose whether you die or end of the game or get badly beaten out, leading to an injury or damage to your equipment. Gain one star or one heart for the rest of the game. Negative one heart, well, negative one star or negative one heart for the rest of the game. Or three to four, local law enforcement somehow interrupt the fight just as your opponent prepares to deliver a decisive blow. They leave or escape, lose one notoriety. Don't want to do that. Or... Five to six, you flee from the confrontation or hide somewhere unusual. Lose one notoriety or one favor. So that's the best case scenario. Me fleeing, fleeing and being able to spend a favor. So I'm going to keep my motivation. I'm not going to spend that because I can't possibly win. And then I am going to get the shit kicked out of me. So I am basically going to... Um, <laughs> it's very funny because I had the extra heart using my concealed blade because it's safer um but it immediately backfired and so i'm trying to attack it this giant huge thing whatever it is uh this like laser proof thing and it just beats the shit out of me um so i'm gonna lose that and then i'm gonna roll failure see how that goes i got a six fuck yeah uh, you flee from the confrontation or hide somewhere unusual. Lose one notoriety or one favor. Yes! Ah, oh, Good God, that would suck. I mean, I, mean, I'm, I was kind of down for, like, losing, like, one star or, like, one heart. That's kind of interesting. But, like, oh, that's good. Okay, so let's bring it over here. Uh, I'm going to lose one favor. I'm down to three favor. As, as I get away as I basically flee from the conversation or hide some unusual. I think what this is, is the creature that basically like knocks me down, has scratched up my armor and whatever, and is, is coming for me. And I basically look around and I like see my dead friend, see all this, like the chaos that has unfolded from me, like trying to prove myself. And again, trying to be the sniper who doesn't miss, um, even though I haven't used my sniper rifle yet. And I rush into a crowd 
And so there's a crowd of people fleeing and I just rush into them. So there's panic, people running around, this monster continues to mess up. Um, and so people don't tend to like me very much because they're just like, this person's an asshole who likes, who like sacrifices random people and puts them in harm's way in order to, to get out and stay alive. So the crowd is dispersed, all this stuff is happening and I get nothing. Um, so I hide away and and rush away and sort of tries to escape town as this this marketplace this hive place is like decimated by this horrible creature now i get to go back to exploration events and and continue doing this as i once again flee another location um all right i got a five if your notoriety is three or higher you get to encounter a lead otherwise you're all in the exploration events table all right didn't get to do that Eventually, I will have enough no notoriety. But it's kind of funny. Like, I do kind of like that it is this character who's trying to be famous and trying to be cool, just like eating shit, falling over, getting getting beaten up. The one thing I did is I started a fight with a person who was like picking out a drunkard and just arriving at a place, and it's just like, this isn't working. This sucks. So, I got a four. A speeding vehicle arrives out of nowhere and two hostiles who work for a powerful crime, crime boss leap out to confront you. Roll a die. Uh, so they're best nicks, a pig-like species, plus two stars. What criminal activity does their boss control and how, why do they feel you threaten it? Or they're masked humans, uh, one star, one heart. What do their masks look like and where have you seen them before? <gasps> This can be related to the to the mystic ones because I made up one character with a mask. Uh, so let's roll. I got a three, which is Besnix, the pig-like species. Uh, what criminal activity does their boss control and why do they feel you threaten it? I think this is the Red Moon Syndicate. Um, I think that uh, this is people who are just like, you're, you're just such a mess. You're here. You're back on this planet. You're messing things up. You're starting fights. You're losing fights. We lost Nask Rask. What are you doing? You should leave. And they're here to threaten me and to attack me. And I think it's kind of complicated because it's just like, I am not here to, like, like speaking to Nask Rask, the whole thing was that, like, I am still a Red Moon Syndicate member, even if I got chucked out, even if I embarrass myself, even if I'm a mess. But Nask Rask is dead. I'm embarrassed and I have to prove myself and I have to like make a scene in order to 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 progress in this game. So I have an option to just talk with them, to threaten them and make them to back away. But I can't. I have to attack and kill them. So they're here to like tell me to leave town or whatever. Um, and I could be scary, I can be all that, but I'm instead going to try to kill them. Um, so there is there's two of them. Two hostiles. So uh multiple opponents. If you're using a, the attack reaction on multiple opponents, resolve the attack against the weakest opponent first and work your way up. Choose whether you spare or kill them as a group, gaining a maximum of either one favor or one notoriety. Damn it. So I got multiple things. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take out my, my rifle. I think like they're like here to threaten me. And I like take off my rifle, my, my scoped protection rifle and just hold it up to them. And I'm like not far away enough to use it. Um, this is going to be an easy win if I win. And I think like they were there with like their two blaster pistols or something like that. And they're just like, whoa, you're just waving a sniper rifle around? This is wild. You can't just do that. That's that's a strange thing to do. Um, and so what I'm going to do is raise raise up my rifle and I'll get four here, I believe. As I, as, yes, I get plus four for the first roll, then plus two. So I'll be in equal grounds after this point. So. I am going to roll that plus four. Get a five plus four, that's nine. I don't think they can beat that. They get a six plus two, so that's eight. So they basically, the first one shoots. Um, I shoot them back. I think they don't have, they don't have any extra hearts. 
um and i i shoot them i shoot the first one dead with a rifle i i reload it's like a bolt action kind of thing and it's the other one has chance to like duck behind like a car and like start shooting at me and and i'll like basically begin to slowly walk backwards with my rifle to try and avoid this but i didn't miss so that's good i get a five plus two and they get a three plus two so they get a five i get a seven and i shoot the other one um and they're down on the ground they are defeated i have one uh, and I get to choose my opponent's fate, I kill them. Um, I shoot them dead, and I finally get my three notoriety. Um, and I didn't miss. And so my my whole thing about being being cool and powerful has finally led me to this point. Unfortunately, I am still exploring, so I'm going to arrive at a location, <laughs> and then I will eventually reach the leads uh, portion of this uh of this of this adventure so let us roll for a destination five uh you arrive at a small spaceport run by a challenging faction resolve both gain one notoriety if it's five or higher a hostile guard approaches uh or roll twice on the destination events table okay so one one notoriety i'm at four which is thankfully not high enough for a guard to appear, but I got more and more. This is good. So I'm arriving at a small spaceport, which I think is the Nuka spaceport, uh, run by the Targ Cartel. Um, this is probably how they're getting the spice mines out of there um, and so forth. Um, and, and yeah, and then I'm going to continue going. So two roll twice in the destination events table. So... Let's start with the first one. I got a four, three to four, and then I roll again, a three, which is you visit the local nomads guild rep to report on your progress. They've chosen a quiet place, but you're not alone. Roll a die. One to three, a cloaked figure is recording your conversation. Gain one notoriety. What symbol or logo can you catch a glimpse, glimpse of under the cloak as they leave? Or four, uh, four to six, a cloak hostile pulls a concealed laser pistol and attacks plus two star who has paid them to ambush you at the nomads guild um let's roll i got a two a cloaked figure is recording a conversation gain one notoriety what symbol or logo do you catch a glimpse of under their cloak as as you leave i'm gonna quickly add my notoriety hell yeah so i'm at five so now it's getting dangerous um and essentially what I do is I arrive there. I sort of say that I haven't been able to find much. I've basically been integrating myself. I've been making a name for myself. I've been shaking some trees. I've been trying to do this thing. I think the, the Nomad Skill rep is just like, I know, I've been listening to the news about you. It's been just an absolute mess. But we hope that there's going to be progress eventually. And then I think what the cloaked figure is, I think the symbol that I see is, I think it's the mystic order because I was, I was thinking whether it could be like the um, red moon syndicate. And they're just like, oh, we heard you were killing some of our people and all this sort of thing. But they know that that's a, not a surprise. Um, if it's the mystic order, then they're just like, okay, we keep an eye on you. You have to do this job. You have to like get this done eventually. Um, and given that I haven't done that, it's, it's getting, they're getting concerned about my progress and about all this kind of thing. Um, and so, and they also might be connected to my target. They might be like associated with that group of the mystic order, the, the good people. So don't really know what's going on there. Um, uh, but they know about me. They might've actually like whispered, like, knowledge of my association and my job that i have going for me but that kind of works into this because it makes it more likely that something will happen um and i roll again i believe roll twice so that is my first thing if i get one more notoriety then that's it for me i mean i can't get any more okay get a one so destination destination events one to two and i'm going to roll again and I got a five. 
Uh, you've heard of a reclusive mystic sh- mentor or tribal shaman lives nearby. They don't receive many unexpected visitors. Roll a dice. Oh, so this could be the person I just met. That's kind of cool. Um, let's see what happens. I got a one. Uh, they open your door, but take one look at your scar and refuse to let you in. What word do they keep repeating as they ushered you away? Uh, so the scar I have is you lost three fingers on one hand in an altercation with a warrior of the mystic order. So they basically see me, notice the scar, and they're just like, oh, we caused you this scar. This is what is going on here. Uh, so what happens here is they they are just like, <laughs> they, they see me. I'm like going to this mystic mentor, presumably to interrogate them and ask them if they're a heretic or whatever. I think they look at me and they see, uh, they say, I am a, like a, a person who hurts Jedi. I'm a killer or something, or I am like untrustworthy or something like that. They're just like, uh, maybe like mercenary. Maybe they just say mercenary, 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 which is hard to see multiple times, um, as I'm sort of ushered away. And so I'm sort of excluded because they look at my head and they're just like, you're a person who, who fights Jedi, who like comes to kill them and had, like does this whole thing. And that's bad. And so we don't like you. And so they're just like, hmm, let's get rid of you. So that's you. Which is good. That could have that could have turned out much worse. Could have fought in a monster or whatever. Um, okay. So I'm back to exploration. Let's go. So I'm at five. Three. If your notoriety is five or higher, you encounter a lead, which is my first lead. Otherwise, roll once on the exploration events table. Uh, so let's roll our first lead. Uh, let us... One. They're a cowardly bureaucrat, somehow aiding your target. Roll for their faction. One to three controlling, four to six challenging. Resolve all. Controlling. Okay, so this is Red Sun. Red Moon. I'm confusing that a lot. How do their actions help to further their political goals here? Um, so I basically arrive, um, so I'm, I'm in this city, I sort of like wander out, uh, and maybe like someone stops me on my way out of the city. And it's, I think it's someone on a similar level to Nas Grask, where they're just like, they're an old, old hand, maybe a former aristocrat or something like this. Um, and they are, uh, here to sort of run the business of this thing. Um, but they are also somehow doing some kind of supporting thing with my target, which is interesting. Don't know what that is. How do their actions help them to further their political goals here? So they're a cowardly bureaucrat. So I think what they're doing is they're financing, they're financing my, my, my target. It's, uh, it's Suki Itch to essentially fight the cartel, fighting the cartel, causing trouble and like, they know this bureaucrat knows that this won't uh, last. This is going to go badly um, after a while. But uh, for now, they have like a, a mercenary who's like helping them fight. And so basically, the the uh, the Blood Moon Syndicate trying to fight back the cartel makes good use of having a mystic on their side who's fighting for good. Eventually, that might change. Um, I get to speak with them now. Um, so. Let's jump over to this and because of a lead i automatically succeed three uh a faction is ruthlessly covering up your target's action what happened to the last person who revealed too much information talking to you will only make things worse for me um so i think they meet me here um and say that i'm asking too many questions uh, the, the person that I am following is of use to the organization. I'm going to quickly give this person an identity. Okay. So I got motion. Uh, I'm going to make them just quickly. They're Murian and they're nervous. 
And what small item do they carry to provide some comfort? Um, they have a... I think they have like a, a like a mystic rosary beads, which are like new. I think they were like perhaps a gift from, from my target. So I think this person, Mishun, is just like, you have been causing a lot of troubles. You've killed like three of our people that we know about. Um, the the leader, whose name is uh, Zix the 13th, isn't happy to hear that you're back. You've been asked to leave before. There are other people who've tried to do what you, do, what you did. There are other people who were trying every day. We want this guy to continue to mess stuff up. We want this guy to to deal with the cartel and and figure this out. And so, yeah, you have to, you should back off. You should stop doing this. So, that having been said, they attack you at range. They have plus threes, things. They attack me at range, shit. Uh, can I still attack? I don't want to do hearts. Okay, so I'm going to basically run at them as they as they shoot at me. And I'm going to try to attack them with my concealed blade once more. Um, as they... As they shoot at me. So I am going to... Roll to attack. So it's 2 plus 3, so that's 5. They got a 2 plus 1. Uh, so I use my... Um, my concealed blade and martial arts training. They're currently at two hearts, so they're down to one heart. Um, and I am going to um attack them again. So I'm attacking close combat. So they begin to shoot at me, and then I rush at them and attack them, which might be cheating, but whatever. Um, and I'm going to attack them one more time to hopefully beat them down and, and stab them some more. And again, they're a crowdly bureaucrat, so that shouldn't really matter. I got a one, which isn't great. And they got a two. So one plus three, so that's four. And they got a two plus one is three. So I still win. They're down to a one heart. I'm still at full. And then... I attack one more time. I got a six. And they got a two. So I, I defeat the hell out of them. So I'm basically like, they're attacking and shooting at me. I'm dashing and dodging. I'm ducking and weaving. I roll, I get out to them, and I just like, just hit the, the, the gun out of their hand, cut them across the face, punch them in the gut or whatever else. Um, and they're like basically there. And then I have a choice between killing or sparing them. I am going to spare them, and I'm going to gain one favor. So I am doing good. So, they got taken care of. That's them. Is that all I have to do here? And yeah, so that is that, is that encounter. That's my first lead. Now I've got to do that twice more. <laughs> so, let's move on from that to... Okay. So now I roll destinations. So I think I'm technically still in um, uh, the spaceport. So if I roll a five, I'll remain in the spaceport. I got a three. You arrive at a bustling market or traveling scrap crawl run by locals. Choose one. So I am coming back to um, my old friend, the Zuko Spite, the, the Hive Caverns. Uh, where I famously ran away from everybody. I think there's a mess. I think the place is decimated speak with a the local then rest or barter to gain sp for, for, for supplies to gain one motivation i'm good with my level of everything so i'm going to try and gain some motivation now so i'm going to speak with a local uh okay half my fla uh, favor rounded up i am currently at three four so i'm at two and I got a one plus two, that's three. And they got a two, so I succeed. Uh, so let's speak with a local. Um, I'll roll on this table. Uh, they got a five. 
Their support for the old Empire new uprising is unwavering. Who do they champion and what benefit could victory bring them? Uh, so I am currently at the Hive Caverns. Who is in control of this? Let me double check. One by local. So this is just people unrelated to the to the big industry. Uh, so I think they're in favor of the old empire. I think there might be some of the aristocratic nonsense that's going on, uh, where people are just like the way things used to be used to be great. Uh, and if if the new empire like sets up shop here and deals with all the ruffians and all the the the, the crime fighting that's going on, or the the fighting the gang wars, I guess then stuff would be much easier. If there was order, then they would be so nice to have that. Um, and so they're in support of the old empire as opposed to the new uprising, which they see as essentially equivalent to the criminals um, who are who wrestling up their town. Which, like, I'm not sure how I think of this. I think my character is in particularly... My character is a criminal, and I don't think, like... I don't think she has much love for other criminals... I don't think she likes the Red Moon Syndicate. She might like be on board with the Tar Cartel. She doesn't like the Mystic Order. I think she's just kind of confused. There's a lot of stuff going on, and she just like wants to get through it all. And 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 arrest a a good Mystic Order person. Um, I think when she encounters them, she might have more of an opinion. But I don't think she likes the Empire. But she hasn't really encountered them much, and I don't think she likes the the new uprising because she also hasn't encountered them very much. So yeah, that's that's the conversation I have with this random person. And then I get to rest of Butterfuss players gain one motivation. So I'll gain one motivation, bringing it up to two. So that is good. Now we get to leave and I have five, I have one, two, three, four, five notoriety. So it's highly likely I'll come across another target as I become more and more famous. It's kind of interesting to see how this sort of, um, keeps rising up the tension keeps sort of ramping up as soon as i get enough like it felt initially that i was kind of running around like bumbling around but now it's sort of it's really coming together because i have i've done a lot of just weird shit and people are like starting to pay attention so that's kind of interesting to see how this game goes so i got a four uh if your notoriety is four or higher you encounter a lead easy great otherwise roll on the exploration events table so let us go to leads. Six. They're a rival nomad trying to get to the target first to capture or protect them. Roll for their nomad profile. Resolve all. Let us quickly jump over to here. I should also say that all of these, these pre-generated things are all available from the website, uh, from, from buying the game. And yeah, that's cool. It's so I'm finding that I would prefer to like bring back in Zeke Abbas, the former mystic. Uh, okay, I'm just going to basically ignore the generation thing and just go with my gut on who this person is. Um, so they are a uh, rival nomad. So Zeke Abbas, the former mystic who's been wandering around. Uh, what connection does this nomad have to your origin? Let us jump over here. Uh, my origin is you were employed by the Red Mood Syndicate until you angered their capricious uh, leader. So I think what happens is that this... So I know that Zika Bass was a former mystic who left to become... To chase wealth, to become a mercenary. And I think at one point, maybe I was hired to attack one of the settlements. I think I might have even been there to attack uh, Janta's temple. And so I might have been the person who showed them that like it is not enough to be a um, to be a priest, to be a mystic, to go through all that. Uh, you have to... There's more to this life. So I think they might have left and became a, a, became a nomad because of me. And I think they, they might even like have this like conversation with me. Like what is, I'll just quickly check the prompt. They became what I am because of this. So I'm like a big inspiration. I'm like the reason that like I attacked them previously. I attacked the community previously and sort of inspired them to become like me. Um, now I'm going to roll to speak with them. 
Let us roll on the table. It succeeded automatically. I got a two. Uh, your target was coerced into their actions. How are they hold to ransom or otherwise made to do it? Uh, sometimes good people can be made to do get bad things. Um. Oh, so, okay. Here is my thought. I am thinking that Target was coerced into their actions. They were held to ransom or otherwise made to do it. I think that they were met by by the target. I think that Itsuki Itch hired them to try and take the bounty. Like maybe met them while they were trying to unsuccessfully to become a famous, world famous bounty hunter or whatnot. And and it, it wasn't going great. And so so Itsuki Itch came to them as just like, I want you to capture me. I want you to go to the Mystic Order who was searching for me and trying to destroy me, and I want you to be the one to do this. And they were convinced to do it because it was the right thing to do, um, that they have gone too far from the path, um, and like helping, helping Itch out in this particular instance could be good for this particular person. Let me double check something. Oh, there's a whole thing that I've been forgetting. To create a lead, first roll for a showdown to establish the location where you encounter them in the wilderness. For the first and second leads, roll on the species and personality tables, then roll for the leads. Uh, I will quickly do that. Give me two seconds. I want to roll where I met this, this one person. Randomize. You track them into a densely packed forest, rock formation, or junkyard. One of you has enraged a large herd of native beasts, causing a stampede that rushes towards you. So I think I'm basically walking, wandering through a junkyard and I come across this person. They're shooting at the beasts and kind of explaining this. And I'm saying like, I know who you are. I know this connection. And they say that I know who you are because I'm, I'm doing this because of you. Like, I mean, you attacked my village and showed me that I could be this. And I'm only here because of being paid to do this by the target. So I'm going to capture this person. I'm going to bring them in and that's going to help help what is going on. It's, it's all part of this big conspiracy or something like this. And then they attack you using the loadout on their profile, lose two favor and one gain one notoriety if you kill them. So I am going to do that. Who are they? Let me quickly check what they are. I think they're an assassin. I think they're like me or they're uncanny, which is like kind of like the, the Jedi. Okay, so I'm going to make them as an uncanny person, and they're going to attack me. So I have a choice between ranged or melee, as we're being like stampeded by random monsters and such. I'm going to attack them in melee. They have a two health, but I minus that one down to one. Um, and I get plus three, and they get plus three as well. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So I will roll plus three, get a three, so that's a six, and they will roll a three, so they also get a six. <clears throat> the tie goes to them, and so they basically win. Um, I am knocked out, I have one armor. So I my hooded cow, mysterious insignia, and padded armor is damaged, but I have two, so I get an extra one. So I'm going to attack them again. Uh, with my concealed blade, I I can get hit t twice more. So I got a two plus three, that's a six. Uh, they will also roll this and get a three, and they get a five. So they beat the shit out of me again. They they damage my armor and all the rest of this. Uh, I'm gonna try and just like jump on the back of all the these these stampeding creatures through this junkyard, uh, and then I'm gonna try and pull out my ro my sniper rifle and try and shoot them. Um, as they, you know, raise, I think they, they, they do, they have their mystic, their shock rifle and mystic powers. And so they're going to try to attack me that way. So let's roll to see how that goes. Uh, so they get plus four and I also get plus four. So you get a three plus four, that's seven. And they get a two plus four, that's six. So I hit them, that damage, that reduces them down to... 
one heart and then I am going to try to attack them again, this time with a plus two. They also have a similar thing. They get a, they still remain to have a plus four. So they have a plus four, but that's my plus two. We'll see how it goes. I get a three plus two, so that's five. And they get a four plus four, that's eight. I'm going to spend a motivation to lower it down. And they get a six. I'm going to... I'm gonna, I'm gonna re-roll that one again. Get rid of all my motivation, and they got a one. And so I spent all my 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 weapons, my things to shoot them and to 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 beat them and to hit them, and they are reduced to nothing. They are defeated, and they are at my mercy. And so as the creatures begin to like the the swarm of creatures begin to duck away, I put down my rifle, maybe reloading it. And and concealing away my blade, having my like scout scarred up uh, weaponry, and I approach them, lose two favor and gain one notoriety if you kill them. What happens if I don't do that? I'm going to spare them. I think again they have connections, and so leaving them alive is probably useful. So I'm going to gain one favor as I as I let them sort of go, and tell them like. When you're when you're better at this, you get back to me. You contact me about all this. So I'm gonna mark one favor. Um, and then I will proceed to my next destination, which this should be the last little little bit. I got a two. You arrive in a small outpost or on play enclave run by the challenging faction. Choose one. Search for anyone who might know you a target to gain one favor, or speak with a local who works here, then rest uh, to gain one motivation. So this is the the this is the Targ Cartel. I'm going to try and gain one motivation before moving on. Uh, so I will now speak with them. Half my favor rounded up. I am currently at five favor, two point five, so I'm at plus three. So, plus three favor, four plus three is seven, one is not as big as seven. Uh, so I succeed on speaking with them. Six. They once fought in the ongoing intergalactic war. Which side did they fight for and who, why did they regret taking part? I gave up everything for them. Just look where it got me. Um, so I think I arrive at this place kind of wounded, kind of in need of some, like, medicine and such like that um and i meet with i think just a random person from from the cartel uh from the tar cartel and they essentially say that they used to fight for the empire they used to work for the empire and do all that kind of thing and it was terrible i think they 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 might have joined it for like a similar reason to the the blood blood moon cartel the red moon cartel whatever they're called um wanting to have order wanting to have everything taken care of wanting to get rid of the criminals and they just saw it was they just made it immensely worth like innocent people got arrested criminal everyone became criminals there wasn't like a, a clearing of crime everyone was criminalized bad stuff happened and they were just like they fought for all these things they believed in it they wanted all this to happen and they stopped and they were just like well, this sucks and they have all these skills and they want to like help people but they don't really know how and so they just basically work for a cartel as a soldier as a as a whatever the cartel needs in order to start an uprising and they're just still doing the whole thing and they're on the they're in the process of like getting out of here making enough money to quit and like do something genuine but they're not quite there yet so that's who i chat with a former member of the old empire and um yeah that's who they are uh so now let's gain one motivation and probably we're gonna get the shit kicked out of us by our target okay three if your notoriety is five or higher you encounter a lead otherwise roll in the expiration events table uh this is not a lead this is our target um let us let us roll 
on the, on the target. So let's roll for the site. You find them in the ruins of a gigantic crashed starship searching for something. A setting. You're both caught in heavy rain, wind or sandstorm, obscuring your vision. So I think it's like sulfurous rain. It's like dirty and black and all the rest of it. And I'm like having departed this 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 cartel mine, the, the spa is called? Gervatag Spice Mines and moving on. I've arrived to this one giant ship, uh, which is like, I think crashed into a volcano or something and like cooled around this ship somewhat and melted the ship a little bit. And I come across them. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, target, let's roll. Four. Uh, you recognize them as, con as a significant feature from the controlling faction. They're well prepared for your arrival. Resolve all. Oh no! This is Dooku! This is, so, this is the character that I brought. This is my former employer. This is... This is uh, Zix the 13th, a manipulative and intelligent aristocrat. The syndicate favors using agents, assassins, and spies over open warfare where possible. Um, so he is currently organizing to have, to infiltrate the, the mystic order who are trying to get rid of him because he's trying to do good. Um, and he is also getting rid of the, the Targ cartel as a secret, as a secret, uh, 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 mystic doing good. And so his, it's almost like, it's not even good. It's like, he's like pretending to be this like superhero, this, this vigilante trying to save the world or whatever. And it's, it's, it's all to just do a power grab to basically like expand beyond just this one place. Once he's like fought all these things, once he's fought, um, the Tar Cartel fought them back, defeated them. I think like that 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 store was on fire. That was probably a Tar Cartel place. Yeah, once that's all dealt with, then then that's all gone. So I have my former employer here, who who's threw me out for being moody and angry and 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 impulsive and bad, and now I'm here having like killed a bunch of their people, having spared a bunch of the people associated with them and now he's here what's he doing he's searching through roll down uh the ruins of a gigantic crash starship searching for something searching for just anything i don't think it really matters um how would defeating them affect the controlling authority is the is the prompt um I think he's the last bastion of the aristocracy or whatever, the last powerful king or whatever that this place has. And so if I if I kill him, then it sort of goes down to to crime lords and to 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 bandits and all the rest of it. The 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 you know, the new thing takes over. Um so now I'm gonna have a chat with him. See what he's like. Um, no need to roll. I just succeed automatically here. I get a one. Your target's actions were driven by revenge. What terrible act did they witness that drove them to exact re retribution? Don't try and tell me you wouldn't have done the same. Um, so we're going up against the mystics. Uh, so their whole thing is that rogue warrior of the mystic order who switched alliance to the light or dark. So I think they saw the mystic order as evil. I think they did genuinely see them as as a bad thing. And so they're just like, what if we could change that? And it's kind of complicated because because Zig, whatever what's his, I keep forgetting his name. I keep wanting to call him Dooku. Um Zix is uh is here expressly to take over the Mystic Order and to to uh expand his empire to them. Um, so he gets to shape what the Mystic Order will look like. I think because he, he dislikes it. And I think there's reasons to dislike it. It is evil. It is doing bad things. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Um, and I'm over here. There's so many tabs, so many pages. And I think they just basically saw like the evil stuff that the bad mystics did. 
just like mind control and just like weird religious stuff and they decided that enough was enough and so once they had this whole organization going they would be like all right time to take care of them time to deal with that and put it under my my grasp and take control of that faction um they climb into a large assault vehicle or trained monster and attack you at large at range with a powerful weapon <laughs> what the fuck um because they're a Jedi. Why would they climb into a, an assault vehicle or a trained monster? Okay, so I'm going to take a, a, an option from a different group. There's a thing which says, they attack you at, uh, in range or melee, whichever benefits them most as they know your weakness. Um, I'm going to steal that and I'm going to put it in into this one because I think that makes more sense given my whole deal than climbing into an assault vehicle or trained monster. So I'm going to mess around with the rules a little bit, do a little bit of, of, of hacking, I guess, in order to make make sense. Because my whole thing is never missing, always hitting, and doing that kind of thing. So they attack you at range of melee, whichever benefits the most as they know your weakness. Um, I think they take out like an elegant pistol and is like basically shooting at me. And... And like like duck between like all the the rotting the, the 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 melted like ship parts and like hiding away and is shooting and trying to keep me like far away as they continue to attack. So let's jump over to attack. Let us do an attack with them. Uh so I'm gonna try and shoot them. I have plus four, they have plus two. Doesn't look great for them, but whatever. So I get a, a four plus four, that is a eight. And they get a four plus two, so that is a six. So they basically shoot and like go wide. I take out my rifle and I shoot them and hit them. And they're knocked sort of back and like sort of like hitting the shoulder and sprawling away. Uh, but then I lose sight of them. And they continue to attack because after this point, my first shot does plus four with my sniper rifle and then afterwards they get to attack me with other things so they they duck around and they continue to shoot me with a little elegant pistol and see how it goes so i'm going to roll for myself so plus two three plus two is five and i get they also get a five and so they basically raise up their gun and shoot me and i am hit and i am sort of thrown back by this thing and I'm like, oh no, I'm sprawling. I'm like, I'm, I'm I got hit by this, by the, by the thing. My um, hooded cow catches a light. I have to throw it to the ground um, as it as it goes through there. So I now only have my mysterious in, uh, insignia and my padded armor. As I raise up my my precision scope laser rifle and try to attack them once again. My armor is currently one. Their armor is currently one. We're evenly matched. I roll a four. They roll a three. So four plus two is a six. Three plus two is a five. Um, so I, I, uh, dashing around, jumping between like um, parts of the ship and and climbing up high, I managed to see them like rushing away and like trying to go towards cover. But I have enough of an angle that I can shoot them, and I hit them in the back. They're wearing a cool cape that I think like catches a light, and I think they they are like smoldering. They don't like rip off their 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 cape. It's like it's a gold cloak, right? It's a gold cloak that is sort of catching on fire. And as they sort of like begin to like ignite and like like raise up, they like crouch behind a, a brick or something or like some kind of a panel and they look at me through um the the ivory mask that they're wearing and they raise up their pistol and try and shoot me one more time as I try and shoot them. I roll a four, they roll a six plus two, they shoot me. I think uh, like the 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 wires or whatever I'm clambering onto like break as the shot happens. I hit I hit the floor, sprawling around. Um, I hear the the firing crackle of of their their burning clothes as they as they come towards me, sort of like treading confidently. 
Um, I grab my rifle, raise it up to shoot them as they're like getting closer and closer, their own gun raised up and we fire at each other and we're both on the same amount of health. And so whatever happens here is what happens. I roll a six. They roll a six. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, so they win because it's a tie and they shoot me. Uh, if you fail an attack after exhausting defense and motivation, it's time to roll for your fate. Roll a die. Choose whether you die and end the game will get badly beaten up, leading to injury or some damage to your equipment. Local law enforcement arrives to somehow disrupt the fight just as your opponent prepares to deliver a decisive blow and they leave or escape, lose one notoriety, or five to six, you flee from the confrontation or hide somewhere unusual, lose one notoriety or one favor. Um... What happens if I just fail? Is there any special rules for this? Let me just double check. Okay, so I think what it's going to be is if I roll a one or a two, I can die. Um, and if it's a three or a four or a five or a six, I'm going to count that as sparing them. So, so the way this works is um, the outcome on a success against a target, I choose their fate and move on to the epilogue. If I spare them, I lose two favor. If I kill them, I gain one favor. If I capture them, I gain two favor. So I think I'm going to roll this 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 failure, and this will determine whether I die uh, or whether I gain. If I, I basically spare them because they get away, so I'm going to roll that. I get a four, which is local law enforcement somehow interrupt the fight just as your opponent prepares to deliver the decisive blow. They leave or escape, lose one notoriety. So I think what happens is as as the shot as they're about to take the shot to take me out, the uh cartel arrives. The Targ cartel turns up, shoots it at um at my employer slash my rival, um, and essentially it becomes a, a fight between them and I'm just left behind, wounded and damaged and unable to take that final shot. Um, and so I'm going to count that as, as sparing them. They get away. I cannot continue and I am defeated. So I'm going to lose two favor, which will bring me to a total of three favor. And then I will go on to the epilogue. Once you've confronted the target and decided their fate, you're ready to end this chapter of the Nomad story. Uh, to determine your epilogue and finish the game, multiply your motivation by two and add it to your favor. I have one motivation, so I get two favor, which is the favor that I lost. Uh, look up the result on these pages and answer the final question. This chapter is then complete. If you choose to play a game with the same nomad, you'll have a new set of starting abilities and some history to build on. So I got a one, two... Uh, one, two, three, four, five favor. So that will put me uh, between four and six. Your actions have caused harm to the population of this planet, either directly or inadvertently. You've become a trigger in someone else's story now. That's amazing. Um, what is the defining memory of your time here? To continue your story with the same nomad, start your next game with zero notoriety, one favor, and three motivation. So I think that what happens is, uh, broad strokes, Zix the 13th succeeds. I think Zix the 13th continues fighting. I think Zix, like, takes out a bunch of the cartels, fights them back, slaughters them, and I'm marked as... I'm marked as some kind of a traitor. I think this might be, like, something like... Some people were starting to, to speak of me as like the person who would fight back the blood, uh, what's it called? The blood, blood moon, the red moon syndicate, and who's like killed a bunch of them and who's like thrown out of this. And I think like after this thing, the story about me is that I am the, the secret apprentice or like the secret ally of, of Zix the 13th, that I was basically doing it just to mislead the thing, uh, mi mislead everybody. Similar to what like, Zika Bass was actually doing. Um, people think that was me that 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 did it. So like, 
I'm now the trigger in someone else's story now. Uh, I think that this is like someone believed in me. Someone believed in what I was trying to do, even though I was like falling on my face a lot and like fighting back against the aristocracy um, and felt like absolutely broken by the fact that I was like purely for the aristocracy and about unseating the 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 mystics and about doing all this kind of thing uh so the defining memory of of my the defining memory of my time here um was just false faces and betrayal and and masks and stuff uh and so that's how i am remembered uh if you continue the story with the same nomad you start your next game with zero notoriety one favor and three motivation um and yeah that is that is the game i am an absolute loser who who fell on fell on their face a lot took out people from my own gang and then didn't get to take the shot when i needed to and didn't get to stop someone very powerful from doing very powerful things but yeah that's that's basically what happens in this this weird little story uh so yeah, I had a fun game with this. Really interesting game. Again, it's uh, playing it for a podcast is kind of stressful because you're just like, oh God, how much, how long is this going to go for? Because this is my first time playing it. But um, I really like how it ramped up. I really liked how once you got some notoriety, it just it quickly all accelerated. I thought it was a really well-paced adventure. I think it's a really interesting way of telling this kind of a story um it's a really cool tool set for doing that um and i think the prompts are amazing i think that um i didn't read them and just go like oh this is so boring i think that it it kept the pressure of all these different mechanics kept it going and yeah i really 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 liked it um so shout out to this game uh once once again this is uh notorious which can be found at alwayscheckers.itch.io slash notorious um, it is designed by Jason Price, Tobin Bokemeyer did the artwork, layout and design consultation by Jack Harrison, and editing by Will Jobst. Um, so be sure to check this one out. 100% recommend it. Really great game. I look forward to talking about it in a future episode. Um, and yeah, thanks thanks so much for listening. This is this was Inside the Table, a tabletop RPG talk show, a very strange episode of that. Um, and thanks very much for listening. Uh, I was Marley. You can follow me at minor underscore Lenahan uh, on Twitter and minor hyphen Lenahan on co-host. My pronouns are he, him. And yes, this was Inside the Table. Follow us at Inside the Table on Twitter and at Inside the Table on co-host. Uh, review on Apple Podcasts. I'm currently able to check those out because I've, 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 I've messed around with things. Um, I basically set up a, a a new a new link tree which you can find which is linktr.ee slash inside the table um, and there's a link to Apple Podcasts where you can review it and we got two ratings and we are currently at five stars so to those two people or one person who rated it twice um, thank you so much for the rating much appreciated um, I I can't click on them I don't know how to to see that who anyone wrote any funny reviews or anything but thank you so much for that um feel free to send questions into inside the table at gmail.com um if you enjoyed this podcast please recommend it to a complete stranger um and every day is a five star friday here at inside the table if there's a game you like go out and give it a five star rating uh for instance notorious is a really good game and yeah cannot recommend that one enough it's a very fun game um, so yeah, without any further ado, th thank you all for listening, and have a good day. May the force be with you. Goodbye. Goodbye. It's kind of weird when I'm on my own. Goodbye.